Metropolis City Council is called by the Mayor of the City of Metropolis for Tuesday, March 17, 2015 at 1 o'clock p.m. in the Council Chambers of the Metropolis City Hall. The purpose of this meeting shall be to discuss and take possible action to proceed with or alternatively suspend the Franklin Park approval improvements. Call the roll, please. Barfield? Here. Carroll? Here. Cresine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Hall? Yes. McManus? Yes. Midnight? Here. And Mizell? Here. Thank you. <coughs> please stand the Pledge of Allegiance and remain that standing for prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. that you have given each and every one. Be with our community, dear Heavenly Father, as this meeting, the, each and every decision that we make will be for the betterment of the community. Be with the ones in our community that have lost loved ones, dear Heavenly Father. Be with the ones that are sick. Be with the caregivers. Be with our armed service personnel, not only on foreign ground, but here in the United States. Guide and direct them, bring them safely home to your families. I ask in our precious name. Amen. Need a motion to approve the minutes. and take possible action to proceed with or suspend the Franklin Park improvements. Uh, I guess we can open it up uh, for discussion. Uh, I actually talked to each and every uh, one of the city council on uh, uh, Friday and probably some on Thursday. But I know I talked to everybody on Friday and uh, I think everybody is probably under the uh, same mindset as myself. I think we have some discussion that we probably need to do. Uh, I appreciate the uh, report from uh, Chris on the pool and some of the legal uh, part of it. And I guess we'll just open it up for discussion. And uh, I, for one, move forward. I, for one, say we continue the construction until completion. Uh, I don't think we can stop because we've got the citizens out here. We've done appropriating the money, and we'll fight this other deal on the back side. And if the money is, uh, I mean, the, the, the money is available, right? Yes. For, for us to finish it. Well, you appropriated yeah. enough money to do it. Yes, mm -hmm. you did in your budget. That's part of the. That's one of the issues. Yeah. Even is, could you stop uh, without incurring some additional liability? Uh, and I don't think so because you've got a contract with a contractor that doesn't say, "Hey, we get out if the state doesn't give us the money," because you had to appropriate the money to make the contract, mm -hmm. and you had to. So it, it was it, since this is a reimbursable grant, which most DNR grants are. You have to incur all the costs anyway up front, and then you get your part back that the state's agreed to pay. Um, although the state has said in this letter, don't incur any more obligations, this is an obligation you incurred back when you signed the contract, not, a, not an obligation that you're incurring ongoing. Now, now, what, now did, did we, did we, we didn't receive, did we receive any money of the 330? You can't bill it until you get done. Yeah, okay. I mean, you all can't right. bill it. I, uh, here's, I prepared, let me give you this, I'll make this maybe answer some of your questions, I'll give you something to take to look at. I prepared here uh, a, a, the original project estimates, that is what we have when we submitted. The actual contract cost, 
uh, the cost incurred to date, what we've actually paid out, and then an estimate of the remaining cost at the bottom. I'm going to hold lunch in case anybody else wants one. Um, the, the way the original thing was set up, it was estimated it cost about six hundred sixty-two thousand. The state awarded us three hundred thirty-one thousand, or fifty percent, whichever works out to be less. Uh, your contract cost was seven hundred eighty-eight thousand. If you remember, we negotiated with the contractor, got that down. So our first change order was a reduction of seventy-one thousand eight hundred dollars. We've added since then a change order of 5916. That's where they put the flowable fill in, and uh, we had to do that to support the foundation. Architect and engineering, those costs were just as they were. That's the design cost. That's what it was proposed in the grant. And then there's a thing called CPA report cost, which we've really not incurred any of that yet, but that's that would have been your total contract uh, cost, 784116, with one exception. We did agree, because it's outside of the... It's, out, it's needed, and it was needed. We did agree uh, to do contract supervision uh, using HMG up to a maximum of $30,000. I didn't put that figure on there, but in the next item where you'll see the actual cost we have incurred to date, you'll see we got the design. We paid for all of that. That's what we paid on the construction, the 256 figure, and then the 16.8 is what we paid thus far on construction supervision. So that's a total of what we paid out total of what we'd seek reimbursement for at this point. That's through the night. Uh, what about, uh, I spoke to the mayor about it, uh, on uh, FEMA money. Can we use, if, if whatever we recoup from FEMA, can we put that towards, that, will that go back into the budget? It's uh, gone back to the general, general. This goes to the general fund, yes. And use that if we get, it gets that, 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 and yeah, I mean, it's just a, it, it, they it's just, it, it's general, so catch wherever, whatever's going in there, well, in the I'm general for, can be I'm used. For, I'm for finishing it 100%. Didn't we budget 780 uh, for the initial project and then 30, so we're at $810,000 then of budgeted money, basically? Probably. So the money is already there. I mean, we yeah. don't have to worry about not having the money. Our biggest issue is... What do we got to do to get our money back from the state of Illinois? Being that we entered it into a contract with them that we feel obligated them to repay 50% or $331,000 in the project. Right. And I, that's another. That's the other item. That was one of the top questions I figured you guys would have. I prepared you a memo um, on that as well. Um, it's my belief that, I mean, the, the first question everybody's got on their mind is could the state legally do this? Answer, I believe, after two days of research, is no. Uh, now, legal and doing it are two different <laughs> things, okay? Yeah. If you're big enough, old boy, I guess you can do pretty much what you yeah. want. Uh, and I believe that's kind of the, the heavy hand of the state at work here. The contract, and, con and, and keep in mind, we're both subject to a contract. The contract law, I believe, still applies. I don't think the state has the right to unilaterally suspend contract law. The contract clearly says the only way the state can not meet its obligation is if the legislature did not appropriate funds. That's it. That is that the notice you got said, please refer to paragraph four on page two. And that's what it says is they can cease if the Illinois General Assembly does not appropriate funds or make funds available. Well, the Illinois General Assembly did, folks, in the last two budgets, and that's what I explained in there. We've looked them up. There was, as I, I think I said, in 2013, they put... 14 million in new money into Oslab and carried over uh, 80, what, 80 million, let's say, or 81 million from the previous years. In 2014 for 2015, this budget year, last year, they put in 24 million and carried over 83 million by specific statute that's been adopted and, and passed, approved, whatever. Um, the money was there. That's the only basis. Now, Prior to starting the project, the state could rescind the agreement, okay? But the agreement, we had started the project over a year ago, a year and a half ago. So now there's no basis unless the state were to claim we defaulted, but they didn't send the notice. I mean, it's just like an ordinary contract. If you default, i got to send you a notice. i got to give you a chance to fix that default. you got so many days. Then if you don't, I can terminate the agreement. That's not taking place. That's not even in this letter. So... You're very right that the question gets to be, what do we do? 
I think we submit a challenge back. First off, I think we comply with the letter to the extent that we do let them know and submit an expense report on what we've expended through March the 9th, and we get that in by next next week. So we show we've complied with that part. But I think we send it back a letter that challenges the legality or the authority of the state to suspend this grant and make them prove it if there is, in fact, authority. Are all there. the other municipalities, with this grant, I'm interrupting you, but are the uh, other municipalities doing the same as we are? Right now, Marion, Carbondale? Uh, Marion, actually, they were ready just to seek reimbursement. They finished their project. Uh, Carbondale, we tried to reach out to them yesterday and didn't get an answer back. I, the, uh, I talk, it's not the Carbondale City, it's actually a park district up there that has that grant. Um, so, because I talked to the city attorney, he was vaguely, he was a little familiar with the process and the, pro and the problem it had. Uh, his understanding, they had started the project too. Um, he didn't know what strategy to employ, as I told a couple uh, of the councilmen uh, before we started. Um, he did tell me um, <coughs> he believed represents the park district. It's a law firm that uh, I've associated with before and worked with before. I'm going to find out what their strategy is. Um, I mentioned also earlier that uh, I think they're I know there are other municipalities affected. I'm kind of curious to see if, um, based on an email I got when I got back when we got back last week, uh, our friends in Marshall, uh, I said something about a grant being suspended, and they said Oslad, as if they had gotten the same thing, made me wonder. So I'm going to find out, and I want to see what kind of some of the some of the other municipal strategies are going to be. I think that's one of the things we do need to do is reach out and find out. Maybe we can pool our resources somewhat to. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to look more closely at that. Most of the time, if the state fails to pay something, you just wind up in the court of claims. That's where you wind up. And then you have to, um, and, and then the legislature has to make an appropriation to fund whatever the court of claims finds. I mean, it's a long, drawn out process. But. Uh, Mr. Trable, I, I've done a report on this also and I can see now the difference between your report and mine. We're close, very close. But what I didn't do was add the architect fee in there and the CPA fee. But to date, I mean we've gone too far to stop this. We we got these people on the site and we need to build this pool. And we've got the money to build it. And uh, to my to date we've paid the Contractor two hundred forty-three thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars and eighty-two cents. We paid the contractor that. Now the only thing that I want to discuss is the possible way that we could come up with some money that we were given back in March of two thousand and fourteen. And one of the ways was the sale of easement and the option for the future easement for the existing and future bill port in the industrial park, uh, 45000 Have we received that? No, we've been, we, I'll tell you what we've been waiting on. We, you've approved it, and they've approved it. We've been waiting to get the legal description. Mm -hmm. They okay. had to get a survey, which no, we survey. just recently got. And so, they've been wanting to come back down to finalize that deal. So, yes, so that's... That is 45000 It is 45000 yes, That's yes, the only okay. thing I wanted to hear. Yes, sir. Now, the other thing was off an outstanding loan by purchase area laundry of three hundred and seventy five thousand. That was a possible uh, ability. Yeah, that was paid off yeah, they paid last year. We yeah. have that in the uh, general fund, I assume. Well, you probably spent it by now, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, it, it, was, it came in in the previous fiscal year and bought it. It don't matter. I mean, it's still it still take money out of general fund to pay yeah. for this. Yeah. Yeah. What, where it comes from, where it comes yeah. from. I mean, you the, got uh, paid off. The yes, FEMA or the billboard or whatever. I mean, we still got to pay it, and <coughs> we have to build this thing. We can't not do this for our kids. I mean, there's too many people that use this park, and this swimming pool, we, we have to proceed. I mean, well, we, no we, we we're still it. looking for that money, and yeah. even though it went into the general fund, it's still sure. spent. We can still say we could use a part of that money out of the general fund. And the payment in lieu of taxes from the electric fund was 480000 suggested at that time. That was $900,000 coming in to pay for that pool. And the fourth item was a grant from the loan and hotel motel tax, if needed, which would put us over a million dollars. Do you remember that letter, Rick Rabel? Yes. Yeah, we, you know we, what we I'm have, talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. We have some sources. 
potential sources uh, that we could put money back in the general. I don't think we we've, we've not charged the payment for the taxes yet yet this year, have we, Tricia? I didn't think so. So that's one we have not charged. Uh, but of course, um, and, and for those that don't know, payment lieu taxes, what that means is we charge other utilities for using our easement, whether it be a 5% utility tax or a pole attachment fee. Mm -hmm. And so what it's an internal charge, but we charge our own departments for using our, our right-of-ways and our easements, okay? So, uh, and legally we can do that, which allows us to take money from say, electric fund and move it over to general fund. That's what Mr. Carroll was talking about. So that's what we've talked about. We've done it in the past, and most towns do. So that is one source of possible. And we had not done that yet this year. We have it in the budget, but we did not do it. You say it's in the budget to do it. Yes, it is. In the we, we have the money in the budget, and we have the people on the site, and we don't want to pay a relocation fee and all that goes with it. I say build this pool, pay for this pool, and then look at what you need to do in other places if you've got to make some cuts. I don't know what, the, I haven't read the grant papers here, but I don't know what the other grants, there's a lot of other grants that's been cut. I don't know if that's going to affect us in other places then or not. Right now we don't think so. We don't have a whole lot else out there. The Safe so, Routes School is federal. It's federal. It won't be affected. Uh, your 12th Street project, when and if you would start it, is all federal. That won't be affected. Right. Uh, the only other thing, uh, somebody asked about, well, what about the highway paving project that's coming in? That's a capital project. That's not a grant project, so I really don't have any yeah. way to know it. Now, the, uh, the project at the, in, likewise, the project at the airport is probably not a, I'm not sure it's a grant project. I think it's a capital project. State funds us a very small piece of that. Most of that's federal, most, and a small piece of it's ours. It's like 5% of us, 5% of the state, and 90% federal. So it's probably not impacted. Right now, I would say probably uh, minimal impact uh, as far as uh, existing things that we, we're aware of. Uh, but it all depends on how deep the state goes behind this. You know, I mean, there are, there are other areas that... Uh, Yeah, there are things that they might tap. We just don't know. I mean, at this point, uh, well, well, is the finance committee and the council satisfied in knowing what reserves we had and feel comfortable in going ahead and building this pool, or do we need to get a report from the treasurer stating uh, where the money's invested, <coughs> the return, and so forth, and then get one from Tricia as to what we have in the general fund and so forth. I think the money is there. It was reported in 3000, or 2014, we had $3.8 million in excess. Well, and the, I, right, I think that yeah. money is still there. Yeah. Well, the fortunate part about it is, is many people <coughs> sitting around this table have been here for many, many years. And we've always operated under the uh, program that we never go beyond our means. Mm -hmm. We've always had a reserve. We've always preached to each other, you know, whoever committee here and every project we've ever done that, yes, we can do this, but we have to make sure we've got this reserve over here. We've never spent that reserve. We shouldn't. No. And, and now, fortunately, under this bad scenario, through the guidance and cooperation of not only my office and every other office and the city council, we're not in a dire thing. And in giving Miss Abel, I mean, she's done a tremendous job on a 50-some-odd-year-old pool. Mm -hmm. Our pool itself is in good shape because we've spent money year after mm -hmm. year, and the Park and Recreation Committee has always, if, if Miss Abel says it needs to be painted, Park and Recreation Committee and the, and the City Council has always made sure that we take care of what we've got. Uh, now, I, I was actually asked today, well, would you all have done this if you'd known that there wasn't any grant money available? Honestly, probably unless the state would have just said, come down here and said, it, we probably would not have done it if we, if we weren't going to receive $366,000 of that money back. There's not a doubt in my mind 
that nobody here would have said we need to spend eight hundred thousand dollars. But I, I agree with there. what you're saying, but on the other hand, that pool house was in such bad oh, shape yeah. that the state had come down here and said, You don't have a choice. You're going to do it. It was outdated. It was uh, a bad uh, shape. Yeah, they, had, they had already told us uh, for about the past six or seven years that it was just a matter of like this may be your last year. This may be, and they were serious because it was in such bad shape. That's the way I remember. Yes. They they were right on our doorstep. Right. And to tell us yeah. you're gonna make a change or you're gonna shut down. Right. And there was no way to retrofit it and make it handicap accessible and that is key right now. That it has to be done, period. Right. Well and we had jackhammered uh, we jack we had jackhammered about every piece of concrete down there and the floor and the walls the keep the water flowing and, and things like that. So, you know, some things happen, maybe I always try to look at the positive side, things happen for a reason. Uh, we're going to have a pool house and a pool that uh, is going to last longer than probably uh, more than likely any of us last. So, uh, so, and, uh, right, so at this point right now, our motor fuel tax and tin street is safe. Yeah. Nothing oh, safe well, right, uh, right now. Right, right now. Do it real soon. Yeah. We, have, we, have, we haven't received any notices yet. <laughs> yeah. We haven't received any notices yet. It's still uh, to do it next week. Oh. As much as contracted and done with is any, it's been and lately any contract can hold up. Yeah. So I'm not going to say it's safe because they could just decide it. But that's already the, the notice. It's been delayed. Yeah. Yeah. It's been delayed. Yeah. I it, think it's safe. It's just done safe. and it can be done in yeah. our hands. And the thing I see on 12th Street that they might do is they come up and mess with the motor fuel tax. That would be nervous. And they could do uh, that. Well, they're actually looking. You know, they, you, you got some that says it ought to stay where it is. And your motor fuel tax, you know, is established off of a gallon of gasoline. So, you know, if the price of that all goes down, people, you know, it, it changes. The thing is, until this year's budget finally gets hashed out at the state level between governor and legislature, none of us are really going to know what's what's safe or what's coming back to us or not. I mean, it's just going to be this tug of war from now to goodness knows when. It's supposed to end May 31st, but it, it never does, so it'll it's likely to get be in July or something for all we know. Uh, we just have to figure out ways to continue to operate and go on. Uh, you know, the thing that we can be thankful for now, we're in a better position than the city was when the pool was off the alley back here. <laughs> I went suddenly in there, yeah, and well, they had to shut it down, and they sold the building to the Elks Club. So we're you're fortunate. You're telling your age. <laughs> well, it's true. Yeah, I, remember, I remember when that pool was left.
signed the papers, we dotted the, the, the I's and crossed the T's, and, and uh, Chad and I talked Thursday and Friday, you know, what do you do? <coughs> well, fortunately, it rained all day Friday, so we didn't have to worry about those guys working Friday, but what the true thing is, even if, you know, we need to move quickly for one reason, if those guys get off site, Right now, they're behind on their work program, and we certainly don't want to give the contractors an excuse that says, well, you told us to quit. Right. We need them working every day. We need to complete it, and I promise you that we're going to do everything. I've already talked to Chad. We're going to do everything we can do to talk to the contractors, talk to the people, and see if we can't make some concessions that we can do this cheaper, still get a quality you know, building, and maybe we can do this and maybe we can do that to, to curb that cost enough that we can save part of that money in construction and maybe maybe we don't paint the inside of the group, the thing, and maybe Chris's Women people. We can paint we can it. it. We've yeah. done that before. <laughs> 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 things like that. So we can <coughs> save some money. I don't. Uh, excuse me. Well, you're saying, but I don't think we ought to cut one corner as far as no. finish it. No. Have it 100 percent yeah, paint it. And finish it. it. The two dollars, right? Well, I do too, because I mean, I think we should, because then if we don't, then, then when we go back after the state and they say, well, you didn't do what you yeah. said you were going to do. Oh, you've got to do everything that the yeah. contractor yeah. says. I'll say, yeah. Yeah. Do, it, you know, do it 100%. Uh, yeah. The city's got the money. Yeah. They're, they're going to have a, a reserve fund, a comfortable one. They're not going to be like they was in the 1950s when the employees couldn't get paid on payday and had to wait two weeks on their check. The city is in pretty good shape right now, and will be after this pull out is built. Okay, I'll go ahead and make a motion if we uh, proceed with the uh, building of the pool house as we were going to, and if Mr. Abel continue to look at legal options to for us to recoup our money from the state. Motion to proceed, to proceed by Mr. Prezine and the second by Mr. McManus. Any further discussions, anything anybody else needs to say here? Call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Carol? Yes. Prezine? Yes. Daughter? Yes, ma'am. Hall? Yes. McManus? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And myself? Yes. Thank you. Before we do, call for an adjournment. Mr. Abel has one more small item. And this may be a little bit timely too. Uh, if you remember, last city council meeting, we approved a draft of the uh, intergovernmental agreement with Shawnee Mass Transit. Yep. I sent that off uh, to Ben Ben Yunther or Yunther. I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name. The young man that was here and talked to you all. Uh, he said it was fine. They, in fact, he filled in the dates for how long he thought it would take to complete this project. Uh, they, uh, I did learn a little bit more from talking to him. They are building multiple facilities like this throughout the district. Uh, they got enough money, I think, to build at least three, maybe it's more. Wow. Yeah, because he told me Union County and another county besides this one are building that. And, uh, uh, but I thought this was timely because I asked him this week, I sent him an email this week, had they received any notices relative to their grant money uh, because this is grant money they're going to build this with. And he said no. He was not aware, he was not even aware other communities had gotten notices on local units of government on, on anything. 
and I said, well, maybe it's just coming from DNR at this point. I just was curious if you had received anything. And he said, no. They're all, but he did indicate all their money state money, and it's coming through IDOT. So, you uh, might want to check what email they might have sent it to. <laughs> since but, they sent our notice to a non email. Since they filled this back in, yeah. yeah. I'll probably yeah. put this on the agenda yeah. for next month. Next month, yeah, right. yeah. 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 we'll go ahead and move ahead. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah, let's get it done in the fashion. Yeah, we'll put some changes there, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.